I'm going to read a statement of purpose for a student who was admitted to a PhD in pharmacology and toxicology at both UC Davis and UC San Francisco. This is an excellent example of the rigor that needs to go into a PhD application. And it's also an excellent example of a 500 word essay and how to be very concise in really demonstrating your abilities and what you want to do in a PhD program. Let's dive in. In 2015, the NIH reported that about 10% of Americans have at some point had drug use disorder and the majority did not receive treatment. Furthermore, 40% of people with a substance use disorder also have a mental condition. There are virtually no effective therapeutic treatments. I know firsthand the impact that SUD has on the person and their families. For the past three years, I worked in the biotech industry developing novel treatments for rare genetic diseases. I want to use this experience to develop novel treatments for alcohol use disorder, AUD, and SUD. This desire is what attracted me to the pharmacology and toxicology PTX PhD program at UC Davis. So this is an excellent intro. It is very concise and it shows us first, here's what the problem is that they see in the world and that there are no therapeutic treatments. Then in one sentence, they say this is something that's important to them because they know the firsthand impact of substance abuse in their personal life. And then they tell us, they set up their credibility. They've spent three years in biotech industry working on novel treatments. And now they want to go get a PhD where they can develop uh, drug treatments for alcohol use and substance abuse. And that UC Davis is going to be the place for them to do that. It's super concise and we know what they wanna do and why they wanna do it. Um, oftentimes you'll see in my sample essays, people have these very long stories about where they come from and what they're interested in. In a 500 word essay, you really don't have space for that kind of thing. However, this sentence is a really great one of just kind of making a connection to something personal so that we get to know this person a little bit without having to go into all these details like, you know, my dad suffered from alcoholism or whatever. It's just enough to know this is something that is personal to them that, that they care about. I joined Blank Company as a research assistant and within six months, I was promoted to associate status. Most recently, I supported an interdepartmental investigation into the inactivation of a therapeutic enzyme during the manufacturing process. I was able to determine the mechanism of inactivation of the enzyme, which led to the implementation of preventative and corrective measures during manufacturing. More importantly, I developed a high throughput assay to quantify the molecule responsible for the inactivation. A major drawback of this assay was a volume dependent effect, which caused the concentration of the inactivating molecule to increase as the sample volume increased. After searching through the literature, I decided to deproteinize the samples prior to analysis to eliminate any background chemistry contributing to the volume dependent effect. I identified three deproteinization methods commonly used in metabolomics, acid-based treatment, use of pre-chloric acid and ultrafiltration. All three methods effectively eliminated the volume dependent effect, and I accurately quantified the inactivating molecule. This assay was successfully transferred to a different department where it is currently used to quantify this molecule. My findings were presented at several interdepartmental seminars and published in an internal technical report. This is an excellent example that shows that this person is going to be successful in a PhD program. It shows their research ability, their leadership ability. It shows their ability to lead a project from the beginning to the end. So reading this on an admissions committee, I think this person is prepared for a PhD. This person had many examples of great projects they worked on, but in the SOP, it was important for them to pick the example that was going to be most aligned with showing that they could handle a PhD program. And the rest of their experience, they could just have it listed in the resume or the CV. Although this is a very technical example, I think there's a lot of really great things that anyone can learn from in this example. First of all, they start out with what I call a humble brag. You know, we see that they were quickly promoted within six months. You know, even if I don't understand any of the technical things they're talking about, I can see, hey, that's impressive to be promoted that fast inside a job. Then they do a good job breaking down the steps of what they worked on. They started out with saying, here was the challenge we were facing on this project 
project. I had to try out X, Y, and Z, and this is how I found a solution. And in the end, my solution led to this win. And so in your own essays, you can borrow that model of first I did this, then I did this, then I solved the problem in this way, and it led to this outcome, and here's what happened with my findings. So anyone can borrow that model in their SOP of how to describe a project you worked on. One of the challenges this person had was that they had a very strict non-disclosure agreement with the company they work for. So in the SOP, they couldn't go into that many technical details on their work because that would violate you know, the agreement with their company. So they had to keep things very high level um, by just focusing on the generic terms. If you have a situation like that at work, you know, keep it high level, but you could also mention like, hey, I have an NDA with my company, so I can't go into too many details on the results, but I can share X, Y, and Z and just keep it um, more high level. I will bring my experience optimizing and streamlining assays, formulating drug product, and using an array of analytical techniques to characterize protein and gene products to the PTX program. I'm interested in Dr. David Olison's work with TBG, a psychoplastogen shown to rewire the brain to treat SUD. It is not well documented how TBG accomplishes this. I want to research this because knowing the mechanism of action could lead to TBG treating not only SUD, but other neuropsychiatric conditions. I'm also interested in the work of Dr. John Gray with NMDA receptors and the role these play in neuropsychiatric conditions. I want to understand how glycine and D-serine co-agonists regulate the NMDA receptors and how this can result in the development of treatments. This paragraph really makes a connection to why this program is a good fit for what this person wants to do. They make a tangible connection between the work of these two professors and how that work is going to be important in the research that they want to do. Something else I want to point out that's really important in a PhD application is that you need to be very specific in the kind of research you want to do. A lot of the PhD applications that I read, they're way too broad and it's not clear what specific research the person wants to do or how that university is going to advance the research that the person wants to do. You know, you don't want to say, hey, I'm interested in all aspects of psychology from mental health to working with youth to working with the elderly population. Like that's just too much. You want to narrow in on the specific research questions you have on the specific things you want to work on and dedicate your career to. Another really important thing when it comes to PhD applications is you want to situate the importance of the work you want to do within the field at large. And you do that by summarizing here what's currently happening in the field, here is a gap that I notice, and here's how I want to fill that gap. And this person does this very well in the essay. They talk about how there are virtually no effective therapeutic treatments to treat a substance use disorder. They also, in this sentence right here, they say there's not great documentation on TBG and how it's used to um, activate or rewire the brain. And that's the gap they want to fill is re researching that further because they think that could lead to breakthroughs in creating um, not just SUD treatments, but also also treatments for other neuropsychiatric conditions. So they're situating the importance of the work they want to do within the broader context of the field. Obviously, if you have a lot longer word count, you can go into a lot more technical details, but this person does a great job being concise and they give us a good sense that they know what they're talking about. As a Latina scientist, one of my goals is to ensure that treatments reach all people, especially people of color and those from disenfranchised communities. Many people are often criminalized for having AUD, SUD, or other neuropsychiatric conditions. The PTX program will give me the skills to develop novel treatments, and the community outreach programs at UC Davis will help me bring such treatments to a wider community. This is an excellent conclusion because this person is making a connection to why the work they want to do matters, not just for them personally, but for society at large. And something I want to point out is how this person says here briefly, as a Latina scientist, it really shows us who that person is and that perspective that they're going to bring to this program. Because unfortunately, it's somewhat rare for women of color, particularly Latina women, to be in STEM fields such as this one. But it's really important that we have people in STEM from diverse backgrounds because they add different lenses to how we approach science. 
You know, some universities ask for a diversity statement or a personal statement where you're able to get into a lot of details on your personal background and where you come from. But in a very short, concise essay like this, you can still drop a couple little details about yourself personally like this. You know, it's just a couple words and it gives us insight into who this person is. Um, they also did that in the intro when they say, you know, they know firsthand the impact that a substance uh, use disorder can have on someone and their family. And just those little details give us some insight into this person um, and their personality without going into a lot of detail, a lot of storytelling, that sort of thing. Um, so if you come from a diverse background, you are, you know, one of the few people like you in your field, you're a first generation uh, college student, um, you are, you know, from a background that is underrepresented in the field, you definitely should mention that somewhere in your statement of purpose. And it doesn't have to be this long thing. It could just be like a little name drop like this. And that's enough to show this is what you're bringing to the field. If you wanna get help from me on your grad school application, you can check out my free office hours that happen every month or check out my Grad App Academy where I have lots of tips and tricks on applying to grad school and I meet with my students every week and give feedback on their essays. You can find more information in the description and the links below.